What's up, I'm Troubleshoot. If you're playing Dying Light the Beast, then this guide's gonna help you optimize it for the best performance really, really quickly. That being said, we're only gonna touch on the in-game graphics options. For even more performance out of your system, check the description down below for related guides. So jumping straight into the game on a 3080 Ti at 2K, I'm getting pretty solid performance of around 120 to 140 frames, depending on where I am and what I'm doing. Now, obviously this fluctuates both within cutscenes and things like that, as well as what you are physically, what's happening around you, etc. But for the most part, performance hasn't been too bad. In this current place, I'm getting around 100 FPS. If you'd like a super quick boost in performance, pause your game, head across to options, and at the very top video, simply locate the upscaler type, set this to either XCSS, FSR, or preferably DLSS if you have an NVIDIA GPU, and set the upscaling mode to probably quality or balanced. By default, it seems to use TAA, which isn't the best, and personally, I've seen the best results with the DLSS. With FSR, you can choose an FSR version here, but performance should be similar to TAA. I have noticed a small performance drop whenever you select DLSS instead of anything else, but overall, I'll take a small performance hit for just the amount of quality that that DLSS provides. For example, here's DLSS 90 FPS versus FSR balanced. It's definitely a lot blurrier and performance wise, we gained a couple of FPS, which is interesting. DLSS just seems to work the best for me and I'm balanced, things look crispy and performance is not bad at all. It's just a bit lower here while I'm recording. As for actually gaining some extra performance, I've tested all of the individual quality settings, which you can get to by hitting the key up here on the video tab. By default, it's F, and there's quite a few of these here. If we quickly cycle between the quality presets, this is low quality, around 100 FPS, but keep in mind, changing the quality preset changes the upscaler type, medium quality, takes us down to 90, high quality down to 55. And if we cycle all the way back down to very low, we're getting around 110 FPS. So obviously there's quite a few options we can change for some better performance, right? Well, actually most of the performance difference between these different presets comes from the changing of the upscaling mode from performance to balanced quality and finally native. If we test everything at native, here's very low, 65 FPS, 66, low, around about the same, then medium, a couple of FPS dropped down to 62, and finally high quality, where we dropped down quite a few FPS to 53. So obviously most of the performance difference between these graphics presets comes from the upscaler here, which is a bit sad to see. So I'd recommend setting again DLSS if you have it and an NVIDIA graphics card, otherwise FSR and probably balance for the upscaling mode if you're playing at 2K or above. If you're at 1080p, quality should be fine. We can then hit X to save our changes and there's not really anything else we need to change here. I'll just run through these settings quickly just so you know what's going on. At the very top, we've got some display settings settings on the video tab. Full screen should give you the best performance, but on most modern systems, windowed borderless is just fine. Resolution should match your display. Gamma is your preference. V-Sync should definitely be turned off unless you're getting screen tearing. Safe zone calibration is the size of your HUD. Dynamic resolution scaling should be turned off just so there's no weird changes in graphics quality while you're running around. FPS limiter should be turned off unless you're trying to save battery or extra performance for things like OBS, YouTube, etc. if they're lagging in the background. Upscaler type, we ran through this previously. DLSS or FSR is the best option there. If you choose FSR, you can change the FSR upscaler version down here. If you're using something like a DLSS, you can use a third-party tool or something like the NVIDIA app to set a specific DLSS version. Sharpness, your preference, 30 to 50 is usually great. Latency reduction should be turned on to reflex or reflex plus boost if you've got a lower powered CPU. This, as far as I know, will only really apply if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, but there might be an AMD alternative. Frame generation should always be turned off as having this on gives you some extra input latency, but if you're playing with a controller and you're already getting well above 60 FPS, turning this on is usually not the worst idea. Finally, field of view does actually affect your performance, but obviously your gameplay experience matters far more. Once you set these as you see fit, save using X, and then you can hit F to enter the advanced settings while you're still on the video tab. So at the very top, we've got some 
post-processing effects, glow, light streaks, lens flares, chromatic aberration, and film crane, all of these don't really have too much of an effect. The one that does is oddly light streaks. During testing, none of these other options had any effect, but light streaks took me from 135 to just 132 FPS very reliably, even when there's no obvious light streaks. So there's a small performance hit there, I'm not too sure why. Motion blur intensity I set down to zero to disable motion blur, but it's your preference. Renderer mode can be set between DirectX 12 and 11. Preferably, DirectX 12 should be used, and whenever you change this, you will need to restart your system. Choose a DirectX 11 if you've got a much older graphics card or system. If you do have DirectX 12 mode selected, async compute becomes enabled, and I definitely recommend turning this on. With it set to off, I got 125 FPS, with it on 137. Then texture quality, this is pretty much a freebie in quality, although the only two options we have are medium, which is this here, where I'm using around 6.87 gigs of VRAM versus high, where it jumps up to around 7.6 gigs of VRAM, although textures should look quite a bit better. Ultimately, as we only have two options to choose from, you'll be setting this based on the amount of VRAM in your system. During the earlier missions, getting up to this point here, I actually hit around 10 gigs of VRAM used, which is quite surprising. If you've got a graphics card with less than, say, 6 gigs of VRAM, or even 8 for that matter, I definitely recommend setting your texture quality to medium instead of high. Then, LED biases, how close better quality objects are loaded. Personally, I didn't see a performance hit here, so leaving this on high is probably fine. Draw distance multiplier has a huge impact on performance. If we set it down to 100, I'm getting a solid 84 FPS right now, but raising this half of the way up to 200 takes us down to 60 FPS, and finally 300 down to 42 FPS. Personally, in most scenes, you're not really going to notice the difference here, and the performance hit is massive. I'll leave this on 100, maybe 150 at most. Motion blur quality shouldn't really affect your performance. Particles quality, I couldn't see a difference here, but obviously, if you're getting frame drops during certain combat, explosions, things like that, come back here and lower this. Then, shadows quality. This had a small impact on performance. High, I was around 141 FPS. Medium, 142. Low and very low, around 144. For the incredibly low FPS difference, unless you're clawing for FPS, leaving this on medium or high is probably fine. Then, screen space shadows. With this turned off, I was getting around 142 FPS. With it on, 140. A very small difference once more, leaving this on is probably fine. Although, the difference should be very small. Here's on versus off. I'll just leave mine off. Then ambient occlusion quality. I didn't see a performance difference between low, medium, high. I did see a difference when I set this down to low. Moving from high down to low, not much has changed performance wise, but if we go down to none, you should see a small boost in performance. For me, I'll leave this on high. It should be fine. Global illumination quality. Once more, every option here had had me at 140 FPS versus low, whereas at 142. So again, a small performance difference here. Reflections quality was surprisingly a big one, even when there's no reflections around me. For example, low, 87, 88, medium, around the same, and then raising up to high, I'm at 84-ish FPS all of a sudden. And previously, while I wasn't recording, there was an even bigger difference. So for that reason, reflection quality had only really go up to medium. Then fog quality. Each of these settings had around a 1-2% FPS difference. Low, I was at 144. Medium, 142. High, 140. Low is probably fine here. Finally, post-processing quality. I didn't see a difference here. I'll apply my small changes. And just like that, we should be getting some better performance. But remember, I had my upscaler set to native, and with that, we should be getting the best performance that we could possibly squeeze out of this game on basically any system. It's very unfortunate that most of these options don't really do all that much. It really comes down to what kind of upscaler you're using and the upscaler quality versus your native resolution. A bit unfortunate, but that's just where things seem to be going. In the future, though, I do hope the game gets quite a few more optimization updates and things like that that make it a lot more handleable. But for now, the major things to remember are obviously upscaler type and upscaling mode, as well as in the advanced settings, light streaks, which might be fixed in the future, 
the draw distance multiplier, as well as a small performance boost from reflections and fog quality down here. So again, just a little bit unfortunate. I am recording, so I was dropped down to 90-ish FPS, but while I'm not recording, performance is actually way, way better at around 140, which is much more playable. But yeah, that's really that for this quick optimization guide. Hopefully you got something useful from it. Unfortunately, we can't squeeze too much out of the game just with the in-game graphics options besides those few ones there. So hopefully you found this video useful. Again, check the description down below for some more useful guides to get even more performance from your system. My name is Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.